Dear chess fans, in this video, I'm going to bring more action from Norway chess. It's round three, world's number two. Fabiano Kovana is playing with the white pieces against the world champion Ding Li Ren. It's an incredibly exciting game and I will bring you all the ins and outs. Just before we go to the game, I would like to make a small apology for the setup. I'm uh, here, I'm actually enjoying my holidays, but I don't want to disappoint you guys. Thanks for all the support over the last weeks and months and more than a year already we are trying to grow the channel keep doing that really appreciate all the support so if you consider even to make a small donation via paypal that's not forbidden i would really appreciate it or if you cannot really afford any financial support please consider also to subscribe to the channel or give this video a like share this channel among your friends and then i will just keep using my holidays for chess analysis because chess is my life here i would like to bring you the most exciting moments of the game caruana opens here with one e4 ding is sticking to his main repertoire plays the move e5 knight f3 knight c6 and we have the italian opening bishop c4 knight f6 d3 bishop c5 in fact all the basically the first 10 moves you're going to see in this game they are all very predictable have been played by uh, by both players i think fabiano has even played it with both colors ding is a leading expert on the black side of the um of the italian opening and especially the system with this move a5 is very popular on the channel i've been talking about it before as uh, you're preventing white from expanding on the queen side with a move like uh, b4 both sides are making useful pull moves on the h file h3 and h6 rook e1 bishop e6 and now bishop b5 that is of course a drawback having weakened the b5 square the bishop avoids the immediate exchange for its colleague on uh, e6 and here it does put a bit of pressure against the knight on c6 but after queen b8 we have a very popular tabia of the uh, italian uh, variation and ding as i said is a leading expert begin of january i covered a very interesting game he played as a warming up um, rapid game against his uh, countryman uh, Wang Hao. It was a game in China. And in that game, Wang Hao uh, decided to take her on c6. But the idea of this move, queen b8, is to put the queen on a7 and hit the pawn on uh, f2. And now Fabi comes up with a very interesting idea because he played the move rook e2. This idea in itself is not new, has been played here before. You do protect the pawn on f2 the queen comes out to a7 anyway and now in most games white players they are continuing here with knight f1 this is the typical maneuver you often see in an italian or spanish opening knight is heading for the g3 square but black's idea in this variation is to expand on the queen side with the move a4 to prepare the move queen a5 and black is quite active and doing quite okay here it was in fact a game of uh, Jan Christoph Duda against Ding Liren in the Candidates Tournament in uh, Madrid 2022. And obviously, Fabi has been waiting for a long time to come up with, uh, with his home preparation here. Because instead of Knight of one he comes up with a more or less new idea. He does take on c6. So he's giving up his bishop for the knight, ruining the pawn structure in the center. And now he plays the move a4 so that black is not able to expand here himself. And maybe in the long run, that pawn on a5 can actually become a, a weakness as well. So black has to come up with a different plan here. How is he going to generate some peace activity? Knight e7 is a very good move. So the knight was not doing too much. On f6, it overprotects the pawn on uh, e5. White goes for the move knight f1. And here, very important decision to make for black. Because how are you going to, uh, to generate some uh, activity? I think a move like f5 is very interesting. As um, you're trying to open up the f-file for the rook. Maybe later on the other rook can come over as well. Or at least the rooks are supporting each other. But definitely, Fabi had something prepared here. But we don't know, and maybe we will never get to know. In any case, not in this game, because Ding played instead the move d5. He's aiming for peace activity in the center, trying to undouble his pawn. So if uh, if you're ever going to take on, uh, on d5, black does recapture with the c pawn, most likely. And know that the pawn on e5 is never going to be hanging. That rook on e2 can't move away because black's 
uh, queen and bishop are still eyeing that pawn on f2. So white has a different uh, concept in mind. Played here the move d4, attacking the bishop, trying to close the diagonal, taking away the pressure against that pawn on f2. Pawn takes d4, knight takes d4, attacking the pawn on uh, c6. Black played here the move queen b6. And note that it's never really an attractive idea here to take on e6. Because after knight takes bishop, you take back with the f-pawn. And that actually just helps black to build up the pressure against the pawn on uh, f2. So instead of uh, taking on e6, Fabi, play the move bishop e3. That's a nice idea. Of course, protecting the pawn on uh, f2, but also neutralizing black's pressure being exerted by the bishop on c5. And note that also the rook on e2 is very useful as it not only defends f2, but also keeps the pawn on uh, b2 defended. Anyway, black decided here to take on d4 with the bishop. Maybe a remarkable decision, perhaps a move you would not have expected at this point, but things, uh, things are pretty concrete here. Bishop takes d4, attacking the, the queen on uh, b6 and of course, black would love to play c5. It was not played in the game c5 because it tactically fails to this move. Pawn takes d5, attacking the bishop. If you do take back, it's bishop takes g7, winning a very important pawn. As if you do recapture, it's queen takes d5 and black's position looks awful. So after bishop takes d4, the queen goes back to b7, keeping the pawn on, um, on d5 indirectly uh, supported. And white decides to take here on uh, on d5. C takes d5, and the knight comes to uh, to g3. As we have been expecting in uh, in this game for a long time, the knight is heading for the uh, king side, and maybe at some point is able to strike on the king side. Who knows? Rook a e8. So the rook is uh, joining the action on the e file. Maybe at some point black is able to offer the exchange of rooks. But for now. It is uh, the bishop on e6, which looks uh, pretty uh, pretty passive here. How should white uh, continue here? Fabi played a very logical move. He played a move queen d2. So his plan is to go rook a e1. And then he's saying, look at my pieces. They're all directed at the black king. That should be looking very, very nice. But black is looking for active counterplay with the move c5. The bishop is under threat. The bishop goes back to e3. And now this uh, e-file has been temporarily uh, closed by the bishop. So if one side is moving a bishop away, there is not an immediate uh, trade of, uh, of rooks. And this is a key moment in the game because black has to watch out for ideas based on bishop takes h6. And imagine that a white queen ends up on h6 together with a knight. That black king is in, uh, in huge trouble. But what should black do here? Black play the move king h7. But let's go back because there is a very nice tactical idea. And it's, it's very difficult to see. And well, perhaps the move was seen by Ding. But then he still had to calculate a lot of, a lot of lines. But bishop takes h3 is a beautiful tactical idea. With the point that if you take that bishop, there is knight e5. And the knight comes in to f3 with a huge knight fork. Threatening to win the queen, but also ideas with d4 opening up the diagonal for the queen on b7. Black is doing fine here, apparently. There are some other possibilities. You don't have to take the bishop on h3. You can even consider sacrificing your own bishop on h6 as well. That's pretty cool because, as I said, if you take it and the queen comes there, you're not only threatening to take this bishop, but you're also planning to go knight h5 with mating ideas to come. So after bishop takes h3, bishop takes h6, maybe black got to do something else like rook takes e2, pieces will be swapped. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not, not clear at, uh, at all what, uh, what's going on. The machine is saying that it's more or less uh, even. And um, well, we never know what uh, exactly went through the minds of, uh, of both players. In any case, king h7 was uh, played and now white continues with the aforementioned plan of rook a e1. Black places the queen on c6, small improvement to attack the pawn on uh, a4. And uh, well, what should white do with that? Should you uh, try to save the pawn or should you aim for peace activity here your, uh, yourself? That is not easy to, um, to, uh, to see. And I think once again, Fabi, maybe he didn't play the best move according to the machine. But he's playing very natural chess. He moves the bishop away from e3 to f4 so that the rooks are exerting more pressure 
on this e-file and the bishop on e6 is pinned. What the machine really likes to do, I just briefly pointed out, is to play the move b4. Maybe that's also a move which didn't cross the mind of uh, both players. But the point is, is that if you do take everything, well, you, you, have a, you have a passed pawn. But you can also use the d4 square for your bishop to exert pressure against uh, black's king side. And with ideas like knight h5 coming into the position, or check on d3, or rook lift on the third rank, all of a sudden, black's position becomes quite... Quite, uh, quite suspicious. So that was interesting idea. But let's have a look at bishop f4. We all want to know what happens after this. Black still has time to consolidate his own uh, position with a move like, like knight f6. I definitely prefer white here. Uh, dynamically speaking, his pieces are more active. But also structurally, maybe in the long run, pawn on a5 is, uh, is uh, sort of a problem in upcoming uh, endgames. In any case... After bishop uh, f4, there followed. Queen takes a4. Of course, black is accepting the challenge. Challenge. He's taking that pawn, but the knight comes in to f5. This is the big idea behind white's last move, as, of course, you can't take on f5 because of rook takes e8, and white does win the, uh, the exchange. So that is a very promising uh, idea, and the knight looks incredibly dangerous with threats to sacrifice on h6 or on g7, you, you got to deal with, with all of that. But here, black in, in, under pressure didn't uh, find the, uh, the best way of uh, neutralizing the threats. He should have gone for rook g8 to support that, um, that pawn on uh, g7. Now, after bishop takes h6, of course, you can't take with uh, the pawn because of queen takes h6, and that is checkmate. But you can now take on f5. So that after a rook takes e8, rook takes e8, rook takes, that the bishop is hanging and things are not clear at all with two uh, pieces for the for the rook. Black seems to be uh, doing uh, okay rather than taking on h6 after rook g8. There are other possibilities as well, like you may come in with your knight to d6 and white still is super active. But we all want to see what happened in the game. Queen c6 was played and now Fabi didn't hesitate and didn't hold back. It's time to strike with knight takes g7, opening up the king side, hitting the rook. King takes g7, bishop takes h6 with check. And where should the king go to? Well, definitely not to the g-file, because then there is queen g5 with mate to come on g7 on the next move. So the king went to h7, and now it's time for bishop takes rook. So white is regaining some material and well how should you recapture it's difficult to uh, to say both recapturing with the knight and the rook have their own uh, drawbacks if you take with the knight probably queen g5 is a very unpleasant move to uh, to face here with ideas for instance to to get a rook over to uh, to g3 with ideas to create some sort of a letter mate on the g and h file well, in case you ever block with your knight, then the f pawn can uh, can be mobilized with ideas to go f5 and hit the bishop, kick the knight away. So that knight on g6 is not stable, and uh, therefore black's king is also not um, not uh, totally safe here. In fact, white probably just has a very very strong attack. Therefore, Ding decided to take with the rook, but also in that case there is the move queen to g5. And still, there are uh, a lot of uh, ideas based on the activation of a rook lift via the third rank. If the rook reaches g3, then mate is uh, unstoppable. And, uh, well, black got to do something. Um, in the game, there followed the move rook e8, supporting that, uh, that bishop uh, even more. But uh, now, Fabi here also uh, played a very, very uh, nice idea as uh, he played now this move uh, c4, attacking the pawn on uh, d5. But most importantly, you want to get rid of that, uh, of that pawn on d5 because that enables the rook to come over to e4, which is even more attractive, as in that case you're even threatening checkmate on, uh, on h4. So that's the idea behind the move c4. And together with the queen and the pressure along the e-file, black's position is about to collapse after... Move c4, black just moved the rook away from the e-file. So that now after c takes d5, you're able to take back with the queen. But having the rook no longer on e8 has another problem. Because look at this, it's the final move of the game. Very unexpected. Already move 31, but it is game over. Rook takes e6. 
and Black decided to call it a day. Resigned here on account of the following variation. Black, Black's position is falling apart after F takes E6. It is Queen E7 check. Here, of course, if the king goes to the sixth rank, either G6 or H6, it is Rook takes E6 and you do win the queen. So let's say the king goes back to H8. Then also Rook takes E6 is there attacking the queen. If you try to stick to the material advantage, well, that's not going to last very long because it's Rook H6, King G8. You give another check on G6 and eventually it is checkmate on G7. So that position went wrong pretty fast for the world champion. He is still not back at his uh, old level from before the world championship match. Um, very difficult to say what went wrong. Definitely there are chances for him to, to play better in the middle game. I recall this moment in the, in the position after White's move, Bishop E3. He could have taken on H3, but missing these kind of tactical opportunities, it really shows that uh, Ding is still suffering probably both uh, mentally and uh, and uh, physically from uh, from some sort of an illness. What is exactly going on with him, we still don't know. But anyway, Fabi must uh, be really proud of, uh, of this game, or at least very satisfied with his uh, victory. And uh, that brings him closer on the world ranking list, closer uh, closing in on uh, Magnus Carlsen. And um, in their um, mutual encounter in round four, well, who knows, maybe Fabi can even overtake world's number one at uh, some point during this uh, event of Norway chess. Well, let me know in the comments, what do you think of this game? Once again, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for doing that. Share this video among your friends and come back to the channel. I will cover many more exciting games in the next couple of days. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.